Today, in honour of Christmas, we're going to have a partridge in a pear tree. Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone and welcome back. I hope you're all well. And uh, today I'm going to start on um, painting some of the uh, subjects from that famous song on the first day of Christmas. I think everyone knows that. So today, in honour of Christmas, um, we're going to have a partridge in a pear tree. Very simplified, very zen. I mustn't say that, otherwise the dog will come running. Um, so I'll just say what I'm going to be using at the moment in the way of materials. Uh, okay, here's my preliminary sketch. I'm going to be using um, a pencil. This is a Derwent Graphics uh, B, which is a softish one. I'm going to be using Burnt Sienna, um, Quinacridone Gold. Uh, this is Sap Green, I think. A little bit of black, possibly, uh, and Cobalt Blue. With the Cobalt Blue and the Burnt Sienna, we'll be able to make a nice grey. Then I've got my um, I've got my draw well brushes. This is a size seven round, and I probably will use also at some point one of my Zen brushes, Zen Art. You can get a set of six of these um, in the link below, which will take you to Amazon or to the Zen page. Uh, they're very reasonable and quite a good starter set for painters. Also, the pigment liner probably for the eye of the bird, and probably or maybe the Kiritake, um starry colours there, which I might use. So I'll just put those out of the way for a minute. And I'm going to uh, do the sketch following my outline sketch, which I just did a few minutes ago. Um, the sketch will be available for you on the website if you want to download it for free. Um, I'll get that up there, hopefully, when the video goes up tonight. So we have a um, sort of line here just to give us a basis to start from. And I guess the first time when I did this a minute ago, I started off by drawing the bird. So <clears throat> I'm going to put the head of the bird just off center. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um, you know, we all have a kind of natural size which we draw. Some I don't know uh, if you've noticed that. I know I have. And... Um, so if you want something to come out a little bit bigger than your normal size, then you have to sort of consciously do that. And that's sometimes a little bit tricky. So you might not be doing yourself justice when you say you can't draw, because you might be trying to do things too big or too small. So it's just a thought. You could think about um, uh, changing the scale of your drawing. Now this is not going to be uh, what you might call a realistic, I'm sorry about that, that's the cat jumping on the table and shaking everything. Um, Arthur, get down. Don't you swear at me. You should be grateful. I've forgotten what I was saying now. Change the scale if you're finding drawing difficult when you're doing your own drawings. Um, try drawing a little bit bigger than you have been or a bit smaller. You never know. The reason I thought of that was because I wanted, I did the original sketch fairly small because I was on a smaller piece of paper. Um, it's all happening around here at the moment. If it's not pouring with rain, the cat's meowing. One of the cats has got out and won't come home. Stuck in the in chicken barn. Okay, so now I'm just drawing in the branch upon which the uh, partridge in a pear tree is standing. Okay, 
perching. That's what birds do, isn't it? They don't, st well, they do stand, but we call it perching, don't we? And this one is perching in a slightly unbalanced sort of way, but that doesn't matter. They have, partridges have a very complicated colour scheme. Um, but I'm not really going to worry too much about that. So I decided we wouldn't do a whole complete tree. I don't know if you remember, we did a, a wreath with cardinal in it a little while ago, and I did it as a sort of semi-circle. Well, this is going to be a little bit like that because I'm going to bring the branch of the pear tree up in a kind of curve around the bird. And uh, having drawn that, um, I'm just going to change it a bit because I don't like the angle that I've done there. So we take that off. And we want to bring it, what I have here is the problem because um, I've made a problem for myself because I can't see where the end of my paper is because it's the same color as my background. So I'll just put that there so I can see it. Right, so I actually want this to come up to about there. And that gives us a much better curve. Okay, now the whole point here is we're going to put in the leaves for the pear tree. And, uh, and we will also put in some pears. Make them nice and big. So I'm going to concentrate a little bit on the drawing of the shape of these leaves. I can put one more here. Actually, the pears are the hard thing. They're really tricky. Okay, I'm just going to uh, leave a break there while I finish off that bottom branch. So I um, don't have any clear direction which way I'm going with this, but I'm going to uh, try and paint the uh, partridge kind of wet in wet loosely to start with and then sharpen up some of the details once it's settled. So um, I'll start with that, start with the partridge. Um, I will also actually start off too by putting in his, at least the gen general um, suggestion of his eye. Sometimes it's a good idea to try and get the personality in. Okay, so um, I think I had the note here. It's uh, brown on the forehead. So we'll use 
oh, not on the forehead, on the top, crown of the head. So we'll use um, burnt sienna with a bit of black to make it darker brown. And so I'll put that in on the top line there. Put a bit more burnt sienna. And then down the back here, Oh, I should mention I'm painting on Arch, Arches paper. And then, um, okay, so the tail I think is quite, there's a lot of different kinds of partridges actually. So when you sort of look online for uh, a model, it's not easy actually to settle on a design so to speak anyway they do seem to have a, a lot of speckles around here anyway we just want it to look nice don't we and then the breast is, is a lovely grey. And one of my favourite greys is when you mix cobalt blue with burnt sienna. And you get a very nice blue. So we'll leave that to dry, I think. We'll leave that to dry. Put in his legs. And um, so now I think we'll do the pears and I'm going to do them yellow. We'll just drop in plenty of yellow and then we're going to want a little bit of shadow on one side. So we'll just use burnt sienna for that. Uh, arches, yes, yeah, sorry, arches, 140 pound um, cold press. There are lots of different uh, designs for this kind of painting with this partridge in a pear tree motif. Some people, or well, the colour of the pears, of course, varies a lot. But so I was kind of tossing up between colours. You could use green, but that doesn't contrast with the uh, leaves, that, although it would make quite a nice monochrome type of painting, probably. Um, you could use red, some people use red, and I know you can get red pears, but I'm not sure. I don't know if they're normal. 
I don't know if I've seen one. Oh, maybe I have. Maybe you get red pears in America, Canada. I'm not sure we get them here in France. I don't really know for sure. Now we've got the leaves to consider and uh, we want a nice variety of different greens. So we can achieve that using one green as a background, sort of base, and then you can add other colours to it to give you slightly different shades of green. So it doesn't really matter where you start. And the way I kind of tend to do it is I'll paint the leaf shape like that and then pick up one of the other colours and just drop a little bit in. If I don't like what I've done, I can lift it out. I'm going to have to make that one a little bit darker and you know why? Because I've just realised if I go over the lines, you'll realise the same thing too, won't you? Um, if I go over the line, which is easy to do, of course, you won't be able to rub it out because it's um, because of the pencil underneath. You won't be able to rub it out if the paint goes over the pencil. And I'm just looking for something to scratch the veins in with because that's quite a good technique. If I can find my little glass pen, I found that's quite handy because it's got a reasonably sharp point there. So you can just go in and just scratch in the veins. And if you do that straight away, you'll get a darker vein. And if you um, wait a minute or two, uh, it'll scratch, scratch the paper away and you'll get a, a lighter colored line. So I've got two options. You could do the um, leaves a lot bigger if you wanted to. But I've made mine a little bit smaller at the top there and a bit bigger down the bottom. And on this painting, this particular one, I've kept the leaves a little bit sparse, so there's not that many on them, but you could, not that many of them, but you could obviously do whatever you want. So I'm just mixing sap green with a little bit of quinacridone gold, basically, just to keep it harmonious. Okay, I really don't know how this is going to turn out. Um, so now I'm going to wet the branch. Just put some color, sorry, some water in there. Oh, what am I thinking? I haven't put any of the veins in down here, have I?
So here's a question that um, those of you who are North American or had celebrated celebrate Thanksgiving, which I expect is pretty much everybody in North America. If you have turkey for dinner on your celebration meal for Thanksgiving, what do you have for Christmas? Because in England we have turkey. I don't because I'm now a vegetarian, so I have a thrilling nut roast, actually, which is quite thrilling because we don't have them throughout the year. But um, I made one last year that was really quite good. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I was just wondering, we used to usually, and it's traditional, to have turkey at Christmas. I can't help feeling that if you have it at Thanksgiving, you might not necessarily want it again a month later. Anyway, so I'm dropping um, a mixture of burnt sienna and cobalt blue in for the branch, the colour of the branch, which gives me that nice grey. It's interesting, this paint, um, this uh, paper, because this is supposedly arches, it came from America, and it's basically bleeding. I haven't done anything to this paper at all, uh, apart from use it. I haven't soaked it, I haven't stretched it, I haven't done anything. But it's not behaving correctly, it's bleeding. So it's going, making fuzzy lines. So you'll have to forgive me for that because I don't understand really why that's going on. That is weird. That is truly weird. Oh well, the other pages didn't seem to do that. Have you noticed there's no quality control anymore? Actually, I think I'm going to draw that down a little bit lower, I think. Am I? Yeah, it's amazing. That's really bleeding. Yeah, no quality control. The number of things that are arriving home from the shops and there, uh, oh, I don't know, there's so many different things that have been turning up. Yeah, see, now it's not bleeding on that bit there, so that means that the sizing is uneven across this piece of paper, honestly. It's really not going. Now it is bleeding again. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to, have to stop that there for a second and let that dry. So I have um, added some more leaves and um, <clears throat> I'm going to continue doing that. I've also um, added a little bit of white on the uh, on the uh, partridge. And I'm going to um, carry on adding more leaves. And what I'm doing here is adding a leaf behind some of the others and then, whoops, I keep picking up the wrong colour. Silly.
Um, and then um, I, I'll come back in a minute and I'll show you what I mean. I'm not going anywhere, I don't mean that. I mean, I will come back to talk about that. You can, if you want, you can put in more veins with darker paint like that, as well as um, scratching out. You don't have to only scratch out, so you can do it like that too. And we need to put in some stems for some of these leaves and the pears. And what I quite like to do is to lift out some of the paint so we get an irregular mixture. Leave half of it light, half of it dark, or part of it light and part of it dark. When that dries, it looks a bit more like um, shadow. So it gives it a, bit, a little bit more three dimensions. So hair has come out of my brush. And this carries on for a while. the little dark patch, dark spot at the bottom. And you can do some <clears throat> of the stems can be in black too. I've rubbed out most of the pencil lines. Now we've got a few more up here. They go on forever, don't they? It's a fairly restful and relaxing kind of thing to do. Just thinking to see whether there's any, any more uh, pairs required. I don't think so. 
I've uh, lightened up the bird a little bit with some white gouache just to make it a little more subtle. And uh, I'm now thinking what else do I need to do? Um, rub out some of the lines. I think some of those are still a bit damp, so I don't want to make a big smudge. You could, um, at this point, if you wanted to, you could uh, do pen and ink on here. You could definitely do that. Made the ones in the front a little bit darker than the ones at the back overall uh, because that's kind of closer to you. I don't have any idea whether or not the proportions are right, but if you look at uh, drawings of partridges in pear trees, you'll see that they're not renowned for their lifelikeness. So I am beginning to think probably the only thing left to do might be, and uh, that wants to be blue, to just put a little bit more shadow, not that blue. I might put another leaf in here. And so, yes, I think what I need to do is just fill in some of these gaps. Okay, so I think I'm going to call that a day. Um, you could put some spatter on it if you wanted to. Um, you probably will want to play around with it if you do this painting a bit, I expect, because you'll see things that you don't like, or which you think are too dark or too light. And you could come in with a uh, pen and ink and see whether you thought that was a good idea. If you aren't sure, you could always take a colour photocopy and try it out and see what you think about that. Maybe I'll do that. So here's my photocopy and um, I'm just going to see what happens, see how I feel about it if I... I, I do like pen and ink in addition to watercolour. I do like the effect, I must admit. So, because you can sort of just 
put in little details that otherwise you would you would lose. So that's one way that you can help yourself decide whether or not you want to add. Because I know some people have said, oh, it's so difficult because once you've done it, you've done it. And that's right. That is true. That's another thing too that you can do if you, if you want. You can do some alterations on a photocopy um, or you can scan it and print it out and see whether you like it before you go ahead and, like for example, you could, you could have done that part way through, so not just gone ahead and put the extra pears and leaves on, you could have made a photocopy first. And also with pen and ink, you can just do a few bits if you want, you don't have to do all of it. But as I'm doing this, I'm thinking, no, I don't need to do that. So we're going to go back to the painting and I'm going to call it today and say that that's done. Um, you could definitely use that for a card or it would make a nice gift. Um, it's just, it is what it is. So I will let you go now. And thank you very much for being here with me today. Um, please go to dianenton.com if you want to download um, the sketch of this, which is free of charge, and take a look at some of the other little things that we've got on there as well for you. And uh, Zen has realised, Zen, we used to call him Russell, but now he's become Zen because we found out his real name. Um, he realises that I'm winding up the video and he's coming looking as if there's a chance that we might go on a walk. I think it's a bit rainy today, Zen, to go outside. Anyway, I'll let you go. Have a lovely evening. Thanks very much, everybody, again, for being here. See you again soon. Bye-bye.